Hey, it's Vanessa the Crafty Gemini and I'm back with a knitting tutorial for you. This time we'll be working on my grid stitch dishcloth pattern. It's designed to be beginner friendly, you'll get some good practice with your knit and purl stitches and then in this video I will also teach you how to increase and decrease. So let's get started. My grid stitch dishcloth or washcloth, same difference, right? Includes a free PDF that you can download off my website. I've included the link in the description box so you can click there to download it. So you have all the instructions in print format. So here's one that I have about halfway started and I wanna show you how we build the dishcloth. We start here, then we increase, increase, increase and you'll stop wherever you want to stop. So if you wanna make a smaller one, you would stop somewhere here. If you want to make a bigger one, you can stop even further out here. So it's a great way to use up all your yarn or use up scraps because you can weigh the yarn and determine where the halfway point is and then start to decrease. So that's how we complete the square. We start here, increase to about the halfway point. Then we slowly start to decrease, decrease, decrease up to here. Okay, and that's how you'll end up with a square. In this tutorial, I will teach you how to do a KFB, which is a knit into the front and back of the same stitch, that's an increase stitch. And then we're gonna do also the K2 tog, which is knitting two stitches together, that's a decrease. So this half of the washcloth we're increasing, and then the other half we're decreasing. So some great basic stitches to know as you continue on your knitting journey. So as far as needles go, you can make this with straight needles or circular needles, either way works. And then as far as the size goes, that's gonna be up to you. You can always look on the back of uh, the cotton yarn that you'll be using to see what the recommended size needle is. And the way that that's going to affect your finished washcloth is the bigger the needle size, the looser the gauge, okay? So the looser the gauge is means the airier and drapier your fabric will be. And then also the bigger your washcloth will get quicker because there's so much room in the spaces, okay? One of the pros about making one that's like this, nice and drapey, is that there's so much room in there that it will also dry a lot quicker than a more dense dishcloth. This little one here uses only about 11 grams of cotton yarn and I made it for scrubbing my face and removing makeup, so great little gifts to make. And then this one has a tighter gauge and you can see how nice you get that great grid stitch texture, okay? And it's a good size washcloth as well. For yarn, we're gonna be using cotton yarn. A lot of different manufacturers make this. We do have some listed in our website right now in our online shop, so I'll include the link in the description box for you. You can have a solid version, some stripes, or even this really cool modeled look, which is what you see here. I love the texture that that creates. You know, it gives it more of a watercolory feel, all right? They also come in different sizes. So this big one I got from Knit Picks, and I'll include a link to where you can get this also. This is a 100 gram ball. I can make four of these dishcloths out of here, okay? Then these smaller ones are about 55 grams. So more affordable, less yarn, but you can still make about two out of this one. Or you can make a big one and a little one. Okay, so a lot of different options there. All right, so let's set this aside. Let's grab some needles and let's cast on. Now the yarn that I'm gonna be using, I see on the back here under the knitting needles, it recommends that I use a US size eight or five millimeter needles. I'm gonna bump that up to get a slightly looser gauge and I'm gonna use size six millimeter needles. All right, so we'll slide this off and you can grab the end from the inside or the outside. Then I'll make a slip knot and leave myself a nice long tail that we can weave in later on and trim. I'm using size six millimeter circular needles and I think this will make it nice and um, slightly looser so that I can show you where I'm inserting my needles and all that. So we're gonna do a long tail cast on. And I already have instructional video tutorials on how to do this basic stuff to get yourself set up. So I'm casting on three using a long tail cast on method. So I have one, two, and three. And your slip knot does count as one stitch when you start off. Now for row one, we are going to do an increase. So we're gonna take these three stitches and turn them into four. We're gonna knit in the first one. Basic knit stitch. Then this middle one, we're gonna do a KFB, which is knitting the front and back of this stitch. So to do that, you'll insert the needle just like you're gonna knit. You wrap it around just like you're gonna knit and you bring it out. The only thing you do is stop before you slip this off of your left hand needle because now we have to knit it in the back of it on this side of the loop, okay? 
So I'm going to come around the back and I'm slipping it in the back loop of that stitch. You see that? And then I go in there. It's usually a little tight. Then I wrap my yarn right around it. I'm going to bring that through. And then when you're done with that knitting it in the back part, then you can slide it off your left needle. So you can see that we had three stitches. Now we have one, two, three on here because we did these two middle ones. We made two stitches out of just the center stitch that we had on the cast on there. And then you're going to knit regularly the back one. So that's how we take three stitches and turn them into four. Okay, we're going to do that again. Row two, we're going to now turn into five stitches. Okay, so the first one we knit. Now we're going to do a KFB in the second stitch. So again, insert, wrap, just like a regular knit stitch. Bring it out. Don't slip this off yet. Come to the back. And it's helpful to kind of tip it this way so you can see right where I'm going to insert it in the back loop of that same stitch. Jiggle it back and forth if it doesn't want to stretch out for you because you got to fit that needle in there. OK, then we do it just like we would knit. It's just going through the back loop. So I come up here and now I can slide it off. So again, I took one stitch and turned it into two with that increase with the KFB increase. And then we're going to knit two. So we're just going to knit the last two stitches regularly. One, two, and let's count and see. We should have five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so that's how you start to do your increases. Now row three, we're going to introduce purl stitches, which again, if you need a refresher, I have a link in the description box for how to do the purl stitch in my video tutorial. So we're going to knit the first one. You're going to KFB in the second. So knit front and back. There's the front, come around the back, then slide it off. And then I'm going to, there's three stitches remaining. Okay. We're going to knit the first one, purl the second and knit the first, the, or the last one, I should say. So knit one, purl one, knit one. So knit. Remember that for the purl stitch, you need to have that yarn in front. So bring the yarn to the front. Then we're going to purl, whoops, don't slide off. And we're going to purl this one. And then I sent the yarn back to the back because remember now we need to knit this one and we can't knit it with the yarn in front. So we have to bring the yarn to the back of the work and knit that last one. Okay. So now you should have six stitches. One, two, three, and one, two, three. All right. So for row four, we're knitting the first one. Then you do a KFB, just like you have been doing. Knit in the front, swing it to the back. And now you have four stitches here. It's going to be a purl one, knit one, purl one, knit one. So we're alternating, okay? So if the next one needs to be purled. Remember, the yarn needs to be in the front to purl. So I bring the yarn front, purl that stitch. Now to knit, we got to bring the yarn back before we do the knit stitch. For the purl, bring it forward, then purl. And for the knit stitch, lastly, bring it back again so you can knit. Okay. So if you're new and you just learned how to knit and purl, uh, this grid stitch washcloth is going to get you a lot of knitting and purling practice, which is going to be great for you to build up, you know, before you tackle more complex projects. Okay. So then you're going to start off with rows five and six and rows five, six, seven, and eight are the four row repeats. That's giving us the increased rows and the grid stitch, uh, uh, texture. Okay. So once you memorize those, I can pretty much sit down and do this without looking at the pattern. But it takes a while, you know, to kind of memorize it and know what's coming next. All right. So, so far we've cast on, covered knit stitch, purl stitch, the KFB increase. And to get all the way to here halfway, 
of uh, up the washcloth, that's all you need to know how to do. So we've covered that. Remember that you need to go row by row as per my PDF of instructions here and make sure that you track and mark off every single row as you do them so you can stay on track. If you get off track, you will not be able to get this grid stitch design. The repeat is designed to give you this texture as long as you follow it row by row. Okay, so just go slow and keep track of your positioning. All right, so with what I've taught you so far, your knit stitch, purl stitch, and the KFB increase, you can get yourself to this point. And I'm gonna decide to stop here so I can start decreasing now. And all I gotta do is really measure the side, and if it's the height or the width that you want, then you can say this is a good stopping point to continue to decrease this and complete the washcloth. So this measures about 10 inches, and if I end up with a 10 inch square washcloth, I think that's gonna be plenty big. So now you just go back to the PDF instructions. It's gonna have you work a section of rows here that again, just feature knit and purl stitches. All right, so I'm gonna get through that section and then we're gonna finally be in the decrease rounds. And that's where I'm gonna show you how to work the K2 tog, which is a knit two together. All right, so let's have a look at where we're at. We cast it on, we started to do the increase. You just continue with the increases following that same four row repeat until you got to where you wanted, right? Then we stopped, we worked four rows even, meaning we didn't do an increase or a decrease there. And now at the end of this fourth row that I had to work in the center between the two transitions, increases and now decreases, I've done that and I am ready now to decrease. So here you're gonna be repeating the same knit and purl stitches, but you also need to introduce a decrease called K2 TOG, which stands for knitting two stitches together. And so for this section of the decrease, this is decrease uh, rows one and two, for the first one, you're gonna knit one, and here you're going to knit two together. And all that means is that you're gonna take the next two stitches that you need to work, and you're gonna knit them together as one. So where I just knit, like if you're knitting one, you just insert the needle through one leg of one stitch, you're going to insert it through both. Okay, and the rest is the exact same as you would with any other basic knit stitch. I wrap around the back needle, bring it up, and then when I go to slide this off, instead of just sliding off one stitch from my left needle, I am going to slide off both because I work both. And notice we're turning two stitches into just one that we just put onto our right hand needle. So that is how you do the K2 tog decrease. And then aside from that, for this row, you're just gonna knit across. So make sure to keep following the pattern directions so you see what else you need to do. But again, this entire decreasing section is a four row repeat that features knit, purl, and the K2 tog that I just showed you how to do. So continue with that and you will start to decrease, decrease, decrease all the way until you get three remaining stitches left on your needle. And that is when we're gonna bind off. All right, so I've worked all my decrease rows until I ended up with just three stitches on my left hand needle. And now this is going to be our bind off row. So we're gonna start off by knitting the first stitch. And then I'm gonna knit the second stitch. And now you'll see that we have two stitches left on the right hand needle. So this is where we start to bind off. We need to take the stitch that's closest to my hand over the one that's in front of it and off the tip of the needle to drop it. Okay, so one way that you can do it is with your fingertips carefully, make sure that you're still holding on to that first stitch. So the one closest to my hand over the one in front of it and off the end of the needle. So now you're left with just one stitch on the right hand needle. You're gonna knit the last stitch and then you'll see that again, you have two stitches. So we need to do the same thing to bind off. Pull the stitch that's closest to my hand over the other one and off the end of the needle. And you can see here, I'm using the tip of my knitting needles to do so. So you can use your fingers or the needle. Remember the one closest to your hand over the one in front of it and off the end of the needle. Now we just have the one loop left. So pull it up a little bit so you have a, a longer tail. And then we're gonna grab some scissors to give ourselves about six inches or so and cut it there. Then just take the end of your yarn and you're gonna slip it right through that loop. And when you cinch it all up together, you'll see that you fasten off the entire project. So it's nice and secure. 
All right, and here we have the finished grid stitch dishcloth. And don't worry if it's a little distorted. It's what happens when you knit something from corner to corner because of gravity, right? All the weight of it is stretching it out and distorting it. Now you can block this if you want to for washcloths and dishcloths. I don't even bother because they're already going to get wet and get used. But say you were giving it as a gift to someone and you want it to be really nice and crisp like a perfect square, then you can totally block it. Just wet it down and then pin it out you know, on your ironing board or on a surface that you can allow to sit overnight or even for 48 hours to dry out completely. That way it will hold its shape. Like I said, for something like this, it's not that important. Now the final step is to weave in these loose tail ends that we have. So go ahead and grab yourself a tapestry needle and I'll show you how to do that next. Now I'm gonna be using a bent tip yarn needle or tapestry needle here. You wanna make sure that you get one that has an eye large enough to fit whatever thickness of the cotton yarn that you're using, otherwise you're gonna have a tough time threading it through the needle eye. The bent tip ones are really handy because they help you kind of dig underneath the stitches of where exactly you wanna weave these ends in. All right, so let's go ahead and thread one of our tail ends. And now we're just going to weave this through the back of some of these pearl bumps and the back of some stitches. I just don't want to go through to the front side, which for something like this, it's not really going to matter. I mean, it's a solid colored yarn too, and it looks pretty much the same on the front and back. So I'm just kind of feeding this through. So I'm just going to go under some bumps. A little bit in this direction. Now I'm going to kind of go in that direction. And some people are really particular with how they weave in their ends. I don't really care, especially for something like this, you know? Some people would stop there. I like to go a little bit further. I don't mind weaving in ends. I just do it in any which way that I feel will work. Let's come through here. We'll go this way a little bit. Now I'll just continue to weave this a little bit more just until I feel like I've woven in a couple of inches at least. Then you can remove your needle, grab yourself a pair of scissors and you can cut the tail end really flush and close to your project. Give it a little pat and you can see that that corner's tail has been woven in and all we have left to do is flip it over and repeat the same steps to weave in the remaining end. All right, and there you have it. That is how you make my grid stitch washcloth. Now, I hope you enjoyed this video tutorial and that you'll give it a try. Remember, there's a free PDF pattern. The link is in the description box below. We also have some kits available right now for those of you that need some cotton yarn, the needles, and want to get it put together in a little bundle for you. The link to our online shop on where you can grab one of those kits while supplies last is in the description box below as well. Now, if you enjoyed the video, hit it with the thumbs up, leave me a comment, and don't forget to subscribe so you don't miss out on any of my future tutorials. Thanks again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.